the sixth edition of uh, drawing board competition and uh, there have been a, there have been tremendous response all these years during last year a book is published um, which covers most of the winning entries uh, in fact most of the shortlisted entries and uh, that gives a additional edge to this competition where uh, most of the work wonderful work produced by the students is all circulated within the professional community and this is going to happen uh, in future as well uh, so based on that we started uh, working for the program for uh, for this competition and uh, architect sharad mahajan has already covered this whole process of dindi uh, which uh, which is a 21 days process this is a wonderful process where uh, you sort of try to go closer to divine and you find yourself in the process you you become one with divine and uh, that's something which i feel it is not specific to any religion every religion follows this so uh, i actually compare it with a with a design process where uh, you start a per pursuit of an idea and then you get so much engrossed into it that you sort of lose your uh, yourself and you become one with that idea and that's that process might stretch for one day or one month or one year so this is something more symbolic of that and then every night you take a pause and that's where you sort of unwind yourself and you try to discover yourself and that's in the process of unwinding and the same thing happens in the process of uh, in any creative process where you take a pause maybe even to sharpen a pencil or to you know drink a glass of water and that's the time when you unwind suddenly a great idea comes and uh, this is similar to that the process of stopping in one of the villages in that whole whole journey architect mahajan has spoken about it that that's a very realistic project uh, which which government is supporting uh, but just to give a little extra edge to uh, to make this design process more interesting uh, we looked at one of the villages in this whole journey uh, which is called a velapur project and it has a, a strong historical background uh, they have series of temples there so this is this particular thing is a project where we are trying to see that one one day's halt how it can energize that whole place because it's though though the halt is only for one day there would be preparations going on there is that excitement of receiving these uh, varkaris and then after they leave uh, you know there are stories about that so so that whole excitement which happens in that village how can you stretch that how that process of which happens during one day or one night how can you extend that excitement and make that village you know more happy more um, you know how can you gain something out of that so so what we what we try to do is uh, select a site uh, there are two parts um, one there are two temples in fact one is one is khandoba temple uh, which has a site attached to it and then there is a small um, connection uh between the larger site and this site there are there is there is another temple with a large water tank um attached to it that temple is in a slightly dilapidated condition uh so we want you to look at those um references the context and try to create architectural intervention um where where that whole journey uh that halt where the palki comes and and stops there and there are different functions happen during that night where there would be uh some of these kirtan bhajan what they say it's more about the singing devotional songs or some performances and then the the things about uh, having food resting some of them would rest in the verandas of temple verandas of houses but some of them would still need shelter so how do you create this shelter which could be a kind of a temporary uh, uh temp in a in a temporary form uh which would be used during the during that particular day and it would be dismantled and taken forward but the idea is how do we make use of those references those 
semi-permanent, semi-temporary structures, and then give a different dimension to the the whole thing. So, once these workers go out from there, there would be weekend markets which would happen. There would be some assembly which would happen. There might be some of the classes conducted for the for the village students. Now, some of these maybe semi-temporary structures, how can they, how can those be used uh, to make effective use of that? Now, in addition to that, we are trying, we want you to build something slightly permanent, uh, about 10,000 square feet that need not be at one place, it could be even at multiple places, but something which uh, talks about the history of this place, it could be used as a small exhibition place, uh, and at the same, the same structure can be used for conducting some of the village activities. Um, so that is that is the program. Um, it is not as specific as grounded as the earlier programs. This has a little bit of flexibility, but you have to imagine yourself to be part of that village, and using these resources minimal resources, how can you maximize the effect of it? Now, this is something which we have learned during Corona time, how to use minimal resources and make maximum use of it. And this is precisely these workers do, you know, they represent a minimal lifestyle. They carry minimal things along with them. And same thing in architecture language, how can you represent that and make maximum use of it? Uh, there are a lot of trees on the site. We would like you to respond to that. Um, it's about giving shade, giving shelter, and creating enclosures, responding to the edges of water, uh, responding to the, uh, to the existing temple corridors, temple uh, surroundings, and the connection between the two sites, which is almost, almost like a processional path connection between the two, how do you really uh, maximize the, uh, you know, architectural impact of all these elements. And um, I think it's a very, very exciting uh, project to work on and uh, wishing you all the best.